Hi. Let's have a look at how to create a native Android app using the Visual Basic language, with Mercury. For this video, I'll be using Fire, our development environment for the Mac, but the same steps will work in Water on Windows, or even with elements installed in Visual Studio. Let's begin with the Start a New Project button here on the Welcome screen, and choose More Templates. We pick the Android List View project type. Note how we have a range of languages we can use for this, but let's stick with Mercury. Click OK, and find a good place to save the project. Fire now opens, and shows the newly created project. Let's have a look around. In the Res folder, we have two standard Android layout files. The first is our main layout that describes the view of our app. As you see, it contains a single recycler view. The Oddly named I admit, Recycler View is a special view provided by the Android SDK that shows a list of individual rows, driven by a data source. The second layout describes how each individual item in the list looks. By default it's just a simple text view. Of course you can adjust the actual contents as you see fit. Note that you can either edit the XML directly, which is very common, or edit the layouts visually in Android Studio. Next, let's have a look at the code. There are three source files that make up our main activity, conveniently grouped by name to keep them together as the project grows. Android apps are designed around activities, and you can loosely think of an activity as one screen, or window, of your app. The code for the activity itself is simple. It overrides the onCreate sub, loads the main layout we've seen before and finds the recycler view in it. Then, it creates a simple dummy dataset of two items, and passes it to the recycler view via an adapter class. The data item class itself is very simple, it's just a single string value for each item. Of course in a real application, you would define a more complex data model here, or use an existing class from your data layer. Finally, the list adapter has some boilerplate code to connect the data source to the recycler view, load in the list item layout we've seen before, and here in the nested view holder class, initializes it with the values from the data item. Again, here you would add more complex code to initialize a more detailed view that represents real data. Note that all this code we are seeing is native Android code that works against the standard Android SDK. There's no abstraction layers, Mercury code has direct access to all the APIs that all Android developers use. So let's run this app. You may notice that the run button is grayed out, that's because we haven't told Fire where to run the app yet. Click to open the device picker at the top of the window. Next to the generic device option that will always be present, but cannot be run on, you see that Fire has found two emulators I created earlier, and also the Nexus 6P phone that I have plugged in via USB. Let's select the Pixel 3 emulator. The Run button is now enabled and we can click it, or press Command R. When we do, Fire will first build our app, and then install it on the selected device and run it. If necessary, as now, it will automatically boot up the emulator. The first build might take a while, especially the pre-dex phase, as Android projects can pull in a lot of dependencies that need to be pre-processed. Note that the jump bar below the toolbar turns blue while your project is building, and then yellow, when it's running. The same happens to the fire icon in the dock. Once the emulator is booted up, our app launches, and you can see it shows two lines of text for the two items in our dummy data source. And that's it. The full world of the Android SDK is now at your fingertips, using Visual Basic and Mercury.